that is that uh, DNL Energy, some of the other companies as well, are digging deeper, particularly so that they can inject more and take more. Uh, am I wrong to assume that, that uh, at the 9,000 foot level, being in the pre-Cambrian in a basement, that we really that we really are uh, toying with danger, and that if if as regulators or legislators with the power to regulate, should we not be looking at at least slowing that process down to look at it? Because now you have Marietta, you have one that's not as deep, and in Youngstown you have one at 9,000. So there's a substantial amount of differences that that uh, are causing earthquakes, or in my opinion, they're causing earthquakes because they weren't there before. Uh, circumstantially, they were not there before, so they're causing it. Should we not then back off a little bit? <coughs> how do, all due respect, how do we explain the occurrence of earthquakes that take place where there is no class two injection? Well, that's, that's a good scientific question. Yeah, if, my point is, is that class two injection does not necessarily cause earthquakes. Construction of the wells may have something to do with that. And I'm not really all that familiar with the Marietta case. I hadn't looked into it. And from what I can tell, the injection wells in the Marietta area are relatively shallow compared to the basement where these faults occur. And I think speculation that these earthquakes are triggered by injection is pure speculation with very little evidence to back it up. And as Dr. Chase pointed out, by having a seismograph installed at Marietta, will help us determine if there is a connection or not. Now, as far as the injection fluids and pressures, the volumes, I'm not a reservoir engineer. And I, I would defer that question to Dr. Chase or to uh, uh, Mr. Stewart. I cannot answer that. Mr. Chairman, Doctor, I would just ask that question. I mean, as, as a learned individual as yourself, uh, would we not want to err on the side of caution since you indicated you're not sure. They've indicated they're not sure, but in fact, there are there are there is increased seismicity that would cause alarm. Should we not then just slow the process down and find out why instead of just saying that uh, that you know it still could be, but it may not be. Let's let's not stop the uh, injection. Um, I believe that erring on the side of caution is not a bad idea, but you also have to weigh into that equation, what level of risk are you willing to accept by continuing on with the injection? If no risk is acceptable, then I don't know what the answer is. But it's quite obvious in our industrial society that we accept risk in everything that we do. Well, it seems to the doctor that, uh, Mr. Chairman, doctor, that uh, ODNR permitted uh, the injection well in the pre cambrian rock, correct? And, yes. Uh, uh, it is risking more earthquakes if they're allowing it, under your theory, to inject more of the uh, basement rock. So should we not then say to ODNR, back off, slow down? Um, as I stated earlier, I would suggest to ODNR and in private conversations with people at ODNR, I have indicated that completing a well into the pre-Cambrian basement rock is not a good idea. If it, if it has to be done to provide the space necessary to make the measurements in the Mount Simon sandstone, then it needs to be cemented back. And, and I think that's that's a reasonable outlook on it. But to take all class two injection wells, many of them are very, very shallow. We have them as shallow as 400 feet. Um, the majority of them are in more like in the range of three to 5,000 feet. Do we, I don't think it would be um, wise to stop permitting those types of wells. One of the reasons why these wells are taking additional fluids, if indeed they are, I've heard it reported there, I don't know anything to back that up with, is because there are more fluids coming into the state of Ohio. And a logical answer to the problem is the actual permitting of more class two injection wells so we can handle the volumes that are coming. They would be closer to the water table and the aquifers, the, sh the shallow wells. Well, some of the very shallow ones up in uh, Western Ohio, Northwestern Ohio. Um, yeah, they're, it's kind of surprising how shallow they are, but they are they are designed, they are constructed according to ODNR standards, and so there is predictive casing that would be placed a minimum of 50 feet below and cemented back below the the uh, deepest known groundwater source. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Senator.
for having me. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'll be brief. I just wanted to follow up because those were the questions I had written down. So you got to answer. So the depth limit you don't think would help, but by avoiding drilling into the basement rock, you do think would be beneficial. Now the question that I didn't hear answered was, can you figure out if you're drilling into the precambrium rocks when you're drilling the well? Absolutely. Um, the sedimentary rocks here in Ohio, they're relatively hard. Um, nonetheless, drilling equipment doesn't have any problem penetrating them. But the whole time where you're drilling, you're monitoring your bloodstream, uh, circulation mud, and you know precisely what you're drilling through. Plus, you can use drilling rates. And I'm quite confident that when you hit the Precambrian igneous metamorphic granite type rocks, you're going to see a substantial slowdown in your rate of drilling. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think there's any question when you hit it. Because a lot of these things, a lot of these questions we ask, uh, the experts say, well, that's hard to find, that's hard to understand, that would be hard to pinpoint. But something like this seems, you know, science would, would say that drilling into this base of rock is problematic and you can figure out where that basement rock is. But you can't set a limit because it's, it differs throughout the state. Is that accurate? Absolutely. I cannot tell you that right underneath this podium, we would hit the granite at 9,233 feet. It might be 8,900 feet. It might be 9,500 feet. You can't tell that sort of accuracy. But in the drilling process, you certainly know when you hit it. Any uh, further questions for the witness? Representative Clyde. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witness. I just wanted to clarify one thing that you said in your testimony. You did a cursory review of all 180 uh, class two injection walls and found only eight that have the open completion. The, the database actually contains about 260 wells in it. They're not, obviously not all operational. Uh, and in looking through that database, and, and you have to understand that it's basically an Excel database if you work with Excel, you know what I'm talking about. You can sort, you can look for different features in it. And I was sorting for depth, and I was sorting for completion formations. And based on that sorting, and having fairly limited time to work with, um, I came up with those wells, yes. And then with open all completions. Quick follow-up, I, I wasn't aware um, of that different type of, of uh, wall completion, and I wonder if you could tell me how many other variations there are um, on the injection well completion. Again, you're starting to cross a little bit into the realm of petroleum engineering, but from looking at the records, it's obvious what an open hole completion is because the casing string, the production casing, which is one of typically three strings that are run in the well, it stops short of the bottom hole rather than extending all the way to the bottom hole through which then perforations are shot, as we talked about earlier with perforating for hydraulic fracturing. Uh, basically the same process is done to perforate the casing to allow the fluids to migrate into the formations. In an open hole you have, depending on how much you have, I, the average is somewhere around 1,300 feet of those eight wells. You obviously have a number of these formations. That's an open hole. The other basic completion that I'm aware of, and there may be other ones I don't know, is where you perforate a particular interval, or you can have multiple perforations, and they're sealed off by a packer, and then that uh, disposal fluid is limited to going into just those perforations, whether they be in one or more formations uh, that can 